Hello, my name is Colin, and welcome to part 18 of Let's Build a 2D Platformer in the Godot Game Engine. In this tutorial, not so many series, we're creating this 2D Platformer video game. In this game, of course, you control a little player on screen using keys on your keyboard. Of course, you can walk and jump and fall and explore a fairly large 2D level. Of course, you can jump on and squash enemies. You can get hurt by enemies. You can collect coins to win the game. As always, if you haven't seen any of the previous videos in this series, I'll go ahead and put a link up on the screen right now to this tutorial series playlist here on YouTube with all of my Godot 3 tutorials, including, of course, all of these videos in this series. And well, it's been a while, hasn't it? Hello, Godot viewers. Welcome back to this project. I'm sorry to say I took over a year long hiatus from this project in Godot. I did a couple of longer format videos in creating a card game in Godot about a year ago or so, 11 months or a year ago, but I'm back and I'm gonna continue creating videos in this project to help fill out this platformer project with more of the features that I teased at the beginning of all of these tutorials. So from this point forward, what do we have to do? Well, in this video, we're gonna do a couple of things, actually several things, but one of the things includes the ability for your character to run, running. We're gonna be adding into this project in this video. Also, we're gonna be adding shooting fireballs in future tutorials. We'll be adding wall jumps or wall kicks, the ability to have lives that you can lose when you hit an enemy or you fall off an edge that show up on screen as little hearts. We'll be adding climbing ladders also, as well as pushing a button to reveal hidden blocks in your level and hopefully more features to this game project later on. Now, in this video, in this tutorial, we're going to be adding a few things to our character primarily, including what's called a finite state machine. A finite state machine is going to help us organize our code to make more features and different abilities for our character more possible and more organized in our code. Of course, we're going to be adding running in this video, which includes improving the feeling of acceleration, so speeding up and slowing down at the right times if you're in the air, if you're on the ground. And lastly, we're going to be using a few new programming tools, including what's called an enum, an enumeration. We're also going to be using what's called a match statement and a ternary operator. So three new programming things in this video, but let's go ahead now and jump on in. I will mention that in this video, I am now using Godot. If I go up to the help menu and go down to about Godot, I'm using now Godot 3.4. In the last parts of this video series, I believe I was using almost entirely Godot 3.2, and a few things have changed since 3.2 to 3.4. It's mostly to do with user interface improvements in terms of what we're doing in this 2D project. Not a whole lot is different. Otherwise, you would have noticed if you were following along with these videos in newer versions of Blender, some little things over in the inspector doc especially have changed. But other than that, our project still works the way it should. If I go ahead and open up my level1.tscn file over here in my file system doc, so I have level one open and I'm in my 2D workspace, I can press the play scene button. And as you can see, I'm loaded into my game. I can press left and right on my keyboard. I can press the space bar to jump. If I hit a coin, I collect it. If I land on or jump on, an enemy, it gets squashed and then it deletes itself from the game. If I hit an enemy from the side, I get hurt and I get sent to the game over screen. I'll go ahead and close my game and I will jump over. I'll go to my scene doc here and click on Steve's little script icon. When I do that, of course, I'm looking at Steve's, my little character's script now and I'll make this code more full screen and I'll get rid of this output doc at the bottom. And so we can see now our character's code. And now just to remind you, if I go back to my 2D workspace and I unmaximize my main workspace and I go into my little Steve character's scene. So I click on this little scene clapboard button here. You can see my character is built out of an animated sprite, a collision shape 2D. My character has a timer and an audio stream player and is built upon a kinematic body 2D node object. These things are linked together. That's this little icon here. That actually wouldn't matter too much if I didn't have that on, but it also has on the root node of this scene, the kinematic body 2D, a script. So when I go into the script of my character, 
we have a piece of script that's built off of a kinematic body 2D class, and we have a series of variables and constants for my velocity, how many coins I've collected, my speed left and right, my gravity, how fast I fall downwards, my jump force, how much pressure or force I'm exerting upwards when I press the jump key on my keyboard. Of course, we also have what's called a physics process delta function, which is my game loop. All of this code from line 11 all the way, all the way down to line 35 there. This is the code that runs 60, 60 times per second, pardon me, again and again and again, that controls the logic of my character. In other words, when I press right on my keyboard, I want to play the walk animation. I want to set my X velocity to equal that speed constant, 210. And I want to make sure my character is flipped in the right way. The same else if or elif, I press left on my keyboard, I want to move in the opposite direction at negative speed. I want to play my walk animation and flip my character in the appropriate way. If I'm not doing those two things, I want to just stop and be idle, change to my idle animation. If I'm not on the floor, I want to play my jumping animation or in the air animation. I always want to make sure I'm falling with gravity. I always want to check to see if I'm jumping or pressing the jump key. If I'm on the floor, I'll jump. And I want to always be updating where my character is on the screen and slowing down left and right. Whew. Now, this code, unfortunately, is lovingly or not so lovingly called or getting to be called spaghetti code. Spaghetti code is a pejorative term in the programming world among programmers for disorganized, messy, patchworked, scrambled up, uh, not easy to follow code. In other words, this code almost has no structure at all. I simply typed it from top to bottom and I figured out that in some order, some lines of code, if they are in a different spot in the order of all of these lines of code, my program doesn't work properly, and that's a problem. Also, just having a block of code like this 60 times per second without any other structure means that if I want to limit the ability of my character when they're in the air, they, they can't do certain things, or if they're on the floor, they can't do certain things, or if they're on a ladder or on a wall, they behave differently, that becomes increasingly difficult as we add more features. So in this video, we're gonna be adding what's called a finite state machine. And a finite state machine is essentially a way of organizing code. It could either be a part of a program or game or an entire program or game into logical states. And so my little character here, he's gonna have a few states in this video. In fact, just two. He's gonna have a state called air, which is my in air state. This will be how my character behaves while he's in the air. In other words, when my character is in the air, well, he should be falling and he cannot run. You should only be able to run when you're on the ground. He can't jump when he's in the air because you have to push off of the ground to jump. He can move left and right, of course, but he cannot look like he's walking. He can't have that little walk animation. He's only going to be posed like he's jumping. That's my in-air state. The other state in my finite state machine is going to be what's called the floor state or the on floor state. And in that floor state, my character can walk and look like they're walking when they're on the floor left and right. They can, at the end of this video, look like they're running and move faster when we press another key on our keyboard. My character, when they're on the floor, can jump as well, which they cannot do when he's in the air. So there we go, we have two states. Now, one other aspect of a finite state machine is a mechanism to switch between states because you wanna be able to get from one state to the other. In my case, well, if you're in state one, the in air state, how do you get from being in the air to being on the floor? Well, you simply just land on the floor and that's it. If you wanna go from state two, being on the floor to being in the air, there's actually two ways. You can either jump or you can fall off of an edge. So that's my finite state machine for my character's states. Let's go ahead and program this. Back into my character's code, I have a bunch of variables up at the top. I'm gonna to go ahead and add what's called an enum. Now, technically speaking, I don't need to use an enum, but let me show you what an enum is and you can decide if you wanna use it like me as well. If I wanted to create a list of states, like state one being in the air, state two being on the floor. In the future, by the way, we're gonna add more states, including let's say state three 
is on a ladder. So it will be a ladder state. And state four would be on a wall. So when you're on a wall, you can perform a wall jump or a wall kick, which is a feature that I want to add, of course, to this game. So you would have a numbered list. And if you want to create a numbered list, you could create a list of constants. So I'm going to speed this part of the video up, but I'm going to add a constant called air. This is my air state, and I'm going to make it equal to one. And I'm going to speed this part of the video up now. And so you can see now I have a list of four constants, and this is going to make it easy for me to switch between the different numbers of states simply by having a list of if or else if statements in my physics process delta. You know, if I'm in state one, I can behave in a certain way. If I'm in state two, I can behave a certain way. And because these are numbers, I can use equals equals if you know, my state is equal equal to one or equal equal to two, I can behave in certain ways, but I'm not going to have this list of constants. This is the long way. An enum in programming is essentially an ordered list of numerical values that you have assigned names. So when you're creating an enum in GD script, you can use the keyword enum. You can give your enum a name. You don't have to, but I'm going to give my enum a name called states, and I'm going to name this with a capital S. And that's just convention, I believe. When you make an enum, you have to make curly brackets. And in those curly brackets, you simply list the names of the states or the values named that you want. In my case, I'm going to have air. And because these are essentially constants, I'm going to name them with all capital letters, just like my speed and gravity and jump force, of course. I'm going to list these different states with commas between. That's how you make an enum. So air, comma, space, and then I'll say floor. And for future videos, I'll go ahead and make this now. I'm going to say ladder and wall. So now I have my states, except what Godot will do or GD script will do is it'll start numbering them at zero. So air is assigned zero by default, and then they go up sequentially. So zero and one and two and three. That's important to know. Now, if you want to change that, you can. If I assign air, if I make air equal to one, what GD script will do is it will sequentially number everything after that one value higher. So air is now one. And because I did that, now floor automatically is equal to two and ladder is three and wall is four. And I happen to like those numbers starting at one, not starting at zero. Okay. Now I need to keep track of what state I'm currently in. And I'm going to use a variable for that. And I'm going to make that right after I define all of my states here in my enum. So I'm going to make a variable called var state. And that state has a lowercase s and no s at the end. And I'm going to make it equal to, and this is how I can actually assign my first initial state to be in the air. Because if I go to my game, you'll notice that in my level one, my little character is in the air. So my initial state should be set in my code to being in the air. So I'm going to say states, I can type that correctly, states dot air. And that's how you access any of these values. You say the name of the actual enum, you put a dot and then you name the value. And that essentially means, hey, make state equal to one. Okay. So we have our state, we have our list of states, they're numbered. How do we use them? Well, that goes back to our physics process delta function, right? here and all the code that's in it. We have to divide this code up from there to there. So line 14 all the way to 37 in my case into basically a list of if and else if statements. Now I could use if and else if, but I'm not going to. This is what I could do. I'll speed this part of the video up. So as you can see, I could have an if my state is equal to one and where this pass is, I could put all of the behaviors that I would want for my character being in the air, how my character to behave and act when they're in the air could go right there. Of course, I can make this as many lines as I want indented after the if, and I could have when my character is on the ground, I could have all of the code for that state be right here. Now, there's a couple of things wrong with this. Number one, using ifs and else ifs like this is not the most efficient way of doing this. And number two, I don't want to use these numerical constant values. I want to use my actual named states. That's why we did this in the first place. So instead of putting one here, I'm going to put states dot, and then I'll put, well, air. And there we go. That means the same thing. And if I say states dot floor, that means the same thing. 
but we're actually not going to use if and else ifs. Instead, we're going to use what's called a match statement. Now, if you're a programmer already, or you're familiar enough with other programming languages like C++ or Java, you might be familiar with what's called a switch statement. In GDScript, unfortunately, there is no switch statement. In GDScript, we have what's called a match statement. And a match statement is very similar to a switch statement. And don't worry if you don't know what that is. All we have to do here is say match, and we're going to put a variable name. In this case, we're going to check to see, we're going to match the state variable with different cases, with different values. So I'm going to try matching a value that I want to check to see if state is equal to. In this case, I want to see if the state is equal equal to uh, states.air. Then I'll put a colon, just like an if statement. So this says if my state is equal equal to states.air. Okay, so I'm going to put just for now, a pass under that. By the way, when you have a block of code, when you indent after a colon, this is called a block of code, all the code for our error behavior of a character will go where this pass is. We can put pass there. If we don't want to put any code there quite yet, we can't put just nothing in GDScript, unfortunately. Um, and I'm going to say, otherwise, if my state is equal to states dot floor, I'm going to behave in a different way. So a match statement compares this to either this or this, my state.air or my states.floor. And if it's one of those two, well, it'll do the corresponding behavior. So that is what's called a match statement. Let's go ahead and work on my air state first. If I am in the air, what do I want to have happen? Well, I want my character to show up like they're in their little jump pose. So I'm going to go down to my old code here, and I'm going to find this line of code, sprite.play air. I'm going to copy that, control C. I'm going to go back up and paste that where my pass is for my state's air. That'll be the first thing. So now whenever my character is in their air state, they'll be posed like that. Next, can my character move left and right when they're in the air? Yes, they can. So I'm going to repurpose these two or three if, else, if, and else statements, I'm going to copy those, control C, and I'm going to paste those into my air state. Now, be careful if I press enter right now to put my cursor right here, and I paste with control V on my keyboard, it'll paste the first line with the correct indentation here, but you'll notice that this line all the way down to there is outdented too much. In fact, two tabs. So I'll press tab tab with those lines selected. And now it's all lined up here, which is what I want. So now when I'm pressing right and I'm in the air, do I want to move at the speed of speed? Yes. Do I want to play my walk animation? No, I don't. So I'm going to get rid of that line. I'll delete that entire line. In fact, do I want to flip my pose left and right, my sprite to face left and right? Yes, I do, of course. And the same is true when I press the left arrow key on my keyboard. I want to move at negative speed. I don't want to walk, so I'll get rid of that. And I want to flip my sprite. And so now I will move left and flip left. Otherwise, if I'm not pressing left or right, do I want to play the idle animation when I'm in the air? No. So I'm going to get rid of that. But if I'm not moving left and right, I do want to slow down when I'm in the air. And that was somewhere else in my spaghetti code from before. In fact, it's all the way down here. Velocity.x equals lerp velocity.x 0, 0 0.2. That's my code that says slow down on the x axis. So I'm going to copy that, control C, and I'll go back up. And when I'm not pressing left or right, I'll go right there and paste. So I think we pretty much have a start to our states, uh, our air state code, but I've accidentally indented my state's floor line right there. That needs to line up with my state's air. So I'll backspace that out a few times. Oh, you know what I realized in my line that says match state, I'm creating a new basic uh, condition here, or I'm creating a block of code that's indented. And whenever you do that in GD script, you need a colon at the end of this line. So I'm going to put match state colon. That's why that line was red. It was complaining at me. So now with that colon, I'm indented after that. And I have defined my air state from there to there. And now I'm going to define in a moment my state's floor. Before I do that, there's one more very important few lines of code that we've forgotten. If I'm in the air, 
and I'm pressing left and right and I'm posing in the right way, I still need to move and I still need to fall. And yes, we're going to have that code moving and falling in many of our states, but not all of our states, because in the future, when we code a ladder state, well, when you're on a ladder and you're climbing up and down, you don't fall. So falling isn't a given in every state. In our code, our old code, our spaghetti code down here, we have two lines that make you fall this line right here, and we have a line that actually makes you move right here. Those two lines, I'm actually going to separate them into their own function and just put those two lines in that function so I can call them repetitively from my different states, air and floor. You're going to fall and move in both of those states. So let's go ahead and consolidate those two lines of code into our own custom function. So I'm going to put my cursor down here above the next function on fall zone body entered, and I'm going to write func. Now I'm right at the beginning of this line. That's important. I'm not indented at all. And I'm going to call this function move underscore and underscore fall. And that's what it's going to do. So I'll put my round brackets when you make a function definition, you have to put round brackets and a colon, and then I'll press enter. And now I'm on the next line and tabbed in, of course, I'm going to copy this fall line. In fact, I'm going to cut it control X on my keyboard and click right there and paste. And I'm going to steal that move line, make my velocity equal to, and then actually move my character and assign it the speed to move and it'll return the new velocity. If you hit something, it's a good line of code. I'm going to cut it, paste it right on the next line in my new move and fall function. So that's what this function is going to do. Now, back up in my states, I'm going to actually call move and fall at the end of all my other checking. If you want to pause the video to get those lines of code, you can, of course, but let's go ahead and scroll back up. The very last thing in this states error is going to be calling move and fall. And make sure when you call that function, you are lined up with your if and else not indented like that. Of course, the very, very last thing we have to think about is how do we switch between different states? If I'm in the air, I have to be able to have some logic in here that will switch me over to being in the floor state. And so I'm going to put those mechanisms for switching states at the very top of each state. That's a good thing to do. How do you get from the air to being on the floor? Well, you simply have to detect that you're on the floor. So I'm going to write an if statement here. If is on floor. I'm going to say we are going to make our state equal to states with a capital S dot floor. So I'll simply press my down arrow key and press enter on my keyboard and that will switch us to the other state and it'll now behave in this way down here that we haven't coded yet. Now, one more thing I'm going to do before we finish this state off is if I switch to the floor state right now, because I'm already in the air state, I'm already going through these lines of code. If I switch to being on the floor, it will still do this section of code one more time before it then starts doing the code because it recognizes that we're in the floor state for the floor state. So I'm going to put another keyword right here. I'm going to say continue. And what that will do is the word continue will jump over all of these lines of code and evaluate the next state or if the next state is true, if state is equal to states.floor, which is two. So I've got my air state. What needs to happen if I'm on the floor? Well, if I'm on the floor, I'm not going to pass anymore. I'll get rid of that. I need to be able to detect if I'm pressing left and right. And if I'm pressing those, I need to be able to move left and right and look like I'm walking. So I'm going to take this code. And if I'm not pressing left and right, I need to idle, which is great. I'm going to press tab a couple of times to make it indented correctly. I'm going to delete these extra lines here. So I'll get rid of those. And am I indented properly? Well, yes, I am. There's my check. I'm indented. And all these if and else ifs line up, which is what I want. What I don't have right now is if I'm not pressing left and right, I'm going to play idle, but I have to also slow down to a stop. And so that code again is down here in my old spaghetti code. So I'm going to cut that control X and then go back up here and press enter and paste that right there. This code, if not is on floor, play the air animation on my animated sprite is an old remnant from my old spaghetti code that I'm now kind of amalgamating up into my states. Um, we don't need that anymore because I don't want to play my air animation down here when I'm on the floor. So I will press delete with that selected. Do I want to be able to jump when I'm on the floor? Yes, I do. So I'm going to get rid of some extra spaces here right there. And I'm going to select all of that code and to make it 
in the actual floor state, I gotta press tab a couple of times like that. So now if I'm on the floor, I can press left and right or nothing to move left and right and be idle. I can also, when I'm on the floor, press jump. I don't need to check anymore if I'm on the floor, if I'm already in the floor state. So I'm going to delete that and is on floor. So now if I'm on the floor, I can just jump and I can apply my jump force and I can play my jump sound. One more thing I have to do when I'm on the floor is I have to move and fall 60 times per second as well. Even though you're on the floor, technically you are always still falling and pushing against the floor. So I'm gonna copy this move and fall function call. I'm gonna press control C with that selected. I'm gonna paste it right down there lined up with my if statements right there. So when I'm on the floor, I'm still gonna always be updating my position and pushing down against the ground. Now, we have to have that mechanism in this state for being able to switch over to the in-air state because there will be times when you're on the floor and then suddenly you'll be in the air. In order for us to detect that, I'm going to, at the beginning of this state, put my condition for switching over. I'm gonna say if not is on floor, and then I'll put my colon. Oops, that needs two round brackets and then my colon because I'm calling a method here or a function here. If I'm not on my floor, what will I do? Well, I'm gonna switch over to my air state. So I'm gonna say state equals states dot air. And that should pretty much do it. There is one more place where I'm gonna put this line of code as well, because I have a mechanism down here on my line 45 for jumping. When I jump, well, I want to increase my Y velocity to a negative value to push me off the ground. I wanna play my jump sound, but I'm also gonna right here, paste that line of code so I immediately go into the air state as soon as I press jump. And then I will go and do this move and fall code to actually push me off the ground a little bit if I pressed jump. So there we have it. I'll scroll back up and if you wanna pause the video, there is my floor states code and I'll go ahead and scroll up. I have my air state code and the beginning of my match statement, which has a colon right there, which I had forgotten. So you can pause the video if you need that. And at the very beginning of my code, I have, if I scroll all the way up, my enum and my state. We are not quite done yet. We haven't done running yet and we haven't added acceleration to slow us down and speed us up at the right time. So everything will feel a little bit awkward right now, but let's go ahead and do a control S to save. I'll go back to my 2D workspace and I will uh, minimize my workspace or unmaximize it and I'll press play scene. So right now, can I press left and right and walk? Yes, I can. I can jump and it acts just like before pretty much. What I'm going to do is I'm going to in my Steve's code, I'll go back to Steve's code here is 60 times per second, right at the very top of physics process delta. I'm going to print down to my output debugger down here. I'm gonna use the print function and I'm gonna print my state. And what that's gonna do is tell me 60 times per second what state I'm currently in. Recall that our state is actually a number. So it'll print one or two based on what state that we're currently in. Let's go and see what that looks like. I've got that new line of code right there. I won't keep that for much more in this video, but let's go and check that out. I'm gonna go back to my level one tab, press control S again and press play scene. So now when my game first launches, I was in state one and then I landed on the ground and I am now in state two on the ground. When I press jump, you'll see it goes to state one and when I land, it goes back to state two. If I jump in my little character, well, it thinks that I'm on the ground for a moment because I hit a character and I and I bounced off of it. So then I was back in the air. So it seems to be working pretty well. Unfortunately, right now though, we still have basic movement. That means when I press right or left, I'm moving at that constant speed, that speed that I have literally as a constant right here at 210. Now that we have our states, we can start adding different behavior for those different states. So if I'm on the floor, I want to press left and right to walk. But if I press an additional key, like a letter on my keyboard, I want to make my character speed up, accelerate up to a running speed. So I'm gonna go ahead and figure out now what key I wanna use on my keyboard to run. If I go up to my project and project settings, this is of course where I can go to my input map tab and add a new, what's called an action in Godot. You can see in previous videos, I added a left and a right and a jump action here. You can add an action right up here and you can assign or bind a key 
to that action, and then you can detect it or use it in your GD script. In my case, I'm going to make an action called run, R-U-N, all lowercase. I will press add right there. Now down here in my list of actions right there, I've got a run action, and I can press this little plus, of course, and add a key. I'm not sure what the difference is in this new version of Godot between a physical key and a key, but I'll go ahead and just keep using key. And I will use the letter Z on my keyboard. The letter Z is going to be what I have to hold down as I'm also pressing left or right arrow keys on my keyboard to make me speed up to a run. By the way, I realized as I was practicing for this video that not all keyboards are created equally. I went back and played my demo game, which is on bornCG.itch.io, the original full version with more features than what I've currently taught. And I recognize that in that game, the letter A on my keyboard is my run accelerator button, except on a new keyboard that I got uh, several months ago, it's a Microsoft Designer Bluetooth desktop a chiclet style keyboard, you actually can't press some combinations of three keys on your keyboard at the same time. And I did a little bit of research and I discovered that these keyboard manufacturers are kind of cutting corners a little bit and grouping sets of keys together. So you can't detect some combinations of keys pressed down at the same time. And for my new Microsoft Designer keyboard, you actually can't press letter Z and space and an arrow key left or right at the same time, it won't detect it. So in that game, I have to actually let go of the right or left arrow key in order to jump while I'm running. It's a little bit frustrating, but I found out that on my keyboard, the letter Z is fine for that. So I'll go ahead and press OK and I'll use Z for running and I'll press close. Now back into my character's code, I'm actually going to add a new constant up at the top of my code for run speed. Right now I have a speed that's 210. I'm gonna go ahead and make one more constant below that, const. I'm gonna call this constant run speed, all cap letters, all one word. And I think that about 400 is a good run speed. You can go ahead and try that out and decide what number you want. It'll be somewhere around 400, maybe a little slower. I think 400, it might be a little bit fast. So I've got this run speed variable. How do I implement running? Well, the simple way is to go down to your floor state. Recall that you can only, or you should only be able to run when you're on the floor, because that's when you actually have your feet on the ground to push off the ground to run faster. Can't do that when you're in the air. We're going to check to see if you press right. And if you press right, we're only going to move at this speed if you're not pressing the letter Z, in my case, on the keyboard. So I'm going to put actually another set of if and else statements right here and increase my velocity appropriately depending on what key I'm pressing or not. So I'm going to press enter right there to give me an extra line empty to type in. I'm going to say if input dot is action pressed there's no just in this one okay is action pressed and i'm going to say if i'm pressing oops i'm going to go back there if i'm pressing the run action key which is my letter z what do i want to do i'm going to type a colon here and i will press enter if i'm pressing the run key i'm going to make my velocity dot x equal to run speed now this is not going to be our final code this will simply make me go that speed instantly when I press the run key on my keyboard and I'm pressing left to right, of course. But if I'm not pressing the run key, that means I'm going to put an else right here and a colon. I want to move at the normal old walking speed. So this if and else sequence of statements is new. Okay. I'm going to actually copy that code. Control C with all of those four lines selected. I'm going to go down to my left action here and I'm going to paste that code on top of my old move left code. And all I'm gonna do is if I'm pressing left and if I'm pressing run, I'm gonna make my velocity.x equal to negative run speed. Otherwise make my velocity.x equal to just the old negative speed. So make sure you add those negatives there. So I'm gonna go ahead and press control S to save. If you wanna pause the video to get caught up with this code, go ahead and do that. But I will go back to my level one scene and press the play scene button. And so now if I move left and right, I can of course still jump, I'm still walking. If I hold letter Z down on my keyboard and press left to right, I am now moving much, much quicker. If I let go of Z, I go back into a walk. If I hold Z, I go into a run. What I'll actually do here to give myself a clear kind of runway is I'm going to move all of my little enemies up here and I'm gonna make sure they stay 
on the platform. I'll make sure that on each one detects cliffs is turned on. This one, I'll turn that on and I'll move this one up and detects cliffs on. So they'll just stay up here and I have a place to run. So I'm gonna go ahead and press control S on my keyboard and I'll press play scene. And so now I can walk around without fear of getting hurt and I can hold Z. Now what's happening here is as soon as I press Z, I speed up. And as soon as I let go of it, I speed down. Likewise, if I'm jumping, that works fine. But if I go from a run into a jump, you'll notice something weird happen. I slow down. And if I land on the ground and I'm still running, I'll speed back up again. So I don't like that. When I'm in the air, I don't want to keep going at my run speed, but I want to slow down nicely into a slower speed because if you're running and you jump and you're still moving, yes, you will slow down. So the acceleration is all kind of wrong here. I'm going to go ahead and close my game. I'm going to go back to my Steve scene and my Steve script and I'll make this full. I'll get rid of my output dock at the bottom. What I'm going to do here, instead of just setting my velocity.x to either run speed or speed, is I'm going to use my old friend lerp. Lerp is a function or method that you can call that will increase gradually a value when you assign the return value from this lerp between where that variable currently is and where you want it to get to. We're already using lerp in our code to make our character slow down to zero. So we're assigning velocity.x to equal basically itself, but incrementally at 20% in each increment. That means each time the game refreshes 60 times per second, it's getting 20% closer to zero. Lerp is a great function for us to use. So in my floor state here, I'm not just going to assign the run speed right away. I'm going to say lerp here. And lerp is again a function or a method call that requires three parameters. You say where you are moving from. The speed in this case is velocity.x. Where do we want to get to? Well, if we're running, we want to speed up gradually to the run speed. So I'm going to say run speed here. And in what increment do we want to get up to run speed? And this is up to you. How quickly do you want the character to get up to their full running speed? I'm going to use 10% each time in decimal format is 0.1. We use 0.2 to slow down more quickly so we weren't feeling like we were on ice. So that's an appropriate value for this. I think 0.1 is a better value up here. Likewise, I have to lerp or I should lerp when I am increasing my velocity to just the normal walk speed. So I'm gonna copy this lerp here, control C, paste it over this old speed there, and I'm gonna change run speed to speed. And I think 0.1 is okay over time to speed up to a full walk speed as well. So I'm going to copy that if and that else because I'm going to paste it. I'll control C to copy it. I'm going to paste it down here to replace this old assigning to just the constants there. So I'll delete that if and else and paste the ones from above, except now I'm going to make sure that I'm using negative run speed and negative speed instead of the positive values to make me actually go left. So let's go ahead and press control S to save. That's my floor state. I'm going to give you a moment to pause the video if you need to, but I will go and press play scene once I switch back over to my level one scene there. I'll play scene. So now as I play my game, I'm walking and I'm moving quite slowly. If I hold Z on my keyboard, I will speed up to a run. You know what I'll do? I'm going to close my game for a moment. I'm going to actually print out my velocity.x uh, 60 times per second to see exactly how fast I'm going. So in my physics process delta at the top, I will change this print always statement here to uh, print velocity.x. And that will show me down here again and again how fast I'm going. So I'll control S to save. I'll make sure I'm in level one here and I'll press play scene. And so now at the bottom, you'll see how fast I'm moving left and right. If I move left, I'm getting up to 209.99 when I walk. But when I hold Z, I'm speeding up to 400 or just about 400. Lerp is getting me up to 399.99 etc. So I think that works pretty well. And when I start running, it essentially speeds me up and it's not so uh, jerky. And when I let go, it slows me down. And I think that feels a whole lot better. But when we're in the air, we slow down too quickly. And so I'm going to go back to my code. I'm going to go down to my or up to my air state right here. 
And I don't want to just move left and right, especially if I'm just running on the ground and I uh, jump. I don't want to suddenly feel like I'm moving slower all of a sudden. So I'm going to use lerp here as well. I'm going to say lerp. I'm going to go from wherever my velocity currently is, velocity.x. And I'm going to go to not the run speed ever. I shouldn't be able to run when I'm in the air and I should slow down to a normal speed that you can move at when you're in the air. So I'm just going to use speed for that. You could actually use a different value for air speed if you want to move slower when you're in the air. I think this feels fine. And I'm going to move at 0.1 increments, I believe. That should be fine. I'm going to copy that control C and paste it right there, except I need to make my speed negative, of course. So I'm going to go ahead and save that control S and I'll go back to my level one scene and I'll go and press play scene. But I still think this is a little bit not quite there yet. If I am running, I'll go ahead and run to the right here. If I press jump, you know, I'm speeding uh, quite quickly along the floor. And then when I jump, you know, I'm, I'm slowing down, and if I go back to being on the floor, I speed up again. It doesn't feel too bad, but it could be better. What I'm getting at here is I think that when you're in the air, when you are moving quite slowly and you press left and right, you should speed up pretty quickly at a normal increment of about 10% if you're just jumping up from not running or walking at all. But if you are going from a run into a jump and you slow down too quickly, which I think is what's still happening, it feels a little bit jarring. And so I want to have in my air state, I'll go ahead and close this output dock at the bottom. I want to have two different scenarios here for my right and left acceleration. I want to have a certain acceleration when you're going from running to just being in the air and moving at a normal speed, not run speed, and a different scenario if you are you know, not moving at all left and right and you jump and then you press left and right and you're speeding up. I think you should speed up quite quickly when you move left and right from a stop and you should slow down more gradually. So I could put more if statements right there and right there. Instead, what I'm going to do is assign velocity.x to two different values depending on a condition. And this is a perfect opportunity for us to use what's called a ternary operator. Now, if you come from other programming languages like Java, or I assume C sharp or C++, those languages have ternary operators which use two symbols. They use a question mark and I believe a colon to have basically an if and an else in one line of code where you would assign a certain value based on a condition or another value if that condition isn't true. This is a perfect opportunity for that, except in GDScript, we simply use the word if and else, not the question mark and the colon like in other languages. So I'm going to assign when I'm in the air, this is my air state, when I press right on my keyboard, I'm going to assign velocity.x to equal velocity.x uh, moving up to speed at an acceleration of 0.1 if I'm already moving slower than the speed that we want to get up to. So if I'm starting from a stop or a slower speed, I want to have this code. So I'm going to put an if statement right here in the same line. This is how you do what's called a ternary operation or operator. You say if, and then you write a condition. In this case, if velocity dot x is less than speed, if that condition is true, then we will have velocity.x equal to this lerp and whatever this lerp is doing at this acceleration. But if this if statement does not boil down to true, if our velocity.x is greater than normal speed, that means we're coming into a jump or we're in the air and we have just been running, we want to have another version of this with a smaller acceleration. And so I'm going to say else, and I'm going to copy this code. And I'm going to decelerate down to speed at a much smaller increment. I'm going to say 0 0.03. I think that's a good number. So again, we are assigning velocity.x when we are pressing right when we're in the air to go to speed or speed up or slow down to speed. But we're going to increase by 10% each tick of my game 
if we are already moving less than speed, but if we're moving at a velocity that's already higher than speed, we're going to slow down more gradually. And I think that will feel better for us. So I'm going to copy that big, long line of code there. Control C. I'm going to paste it right here. And I'm going to make sure that I change it to negative speed and negative speed right there. Let's go ahead and try that out. I will press control S to save. There's one more thing we're going to do, but I will go ahead and press play scene with my level one active tab there. And so now if I am running, I'll go ahead and press Z and right. And I jump. I just sort of drift more, which is much more closer to what I want. So if I jump now, you know, I do slow down, but it's not so jarring. It's a very subtle change, but I think it's important if you want a game that actually feels right. There is one last change I want to make in this video to this game project, and that is when my character is walking left and right, my little character is walking animation, him flipping back between the little two frames of his walk animation goes at a certain speed, a certain frame rate. I believe it's five frames per second, which is what I set up earlier in this tutorial series. But when my character runs, I want that to speed up accordingly. So if I close my game and I go back, I'll minimize my workspace and I'll go to Steve's scene. And I'll go to my 2D workspace here and I go to my animated sprite here and I go to my walk animation. Yep, my walk animation, if I'm looking at my animation or my sprite frames resource here, that's how I got into that. I clicked on that. I'm now looking at these named animations. It's running at five frames per second. Now I'm not gonna change this number here in this interface, but I can actually change it through code using what's called speed scale of this animation. So I'm gonna to go to my Steve's code. I'm going to maximize my code workspace. When I am pressing left and right and I'm on the floor. So I'm gonna go down to my floor state here. I was up in my air state before. When I'm on the floor and I'm pressing right and I'm pressing run, I wanna get the animation of him walking and speed it up. How do we do that? Well, when I press run and I actually start moving at that higher speed, I'm going to get my animated sprite. So I'm gonna say dollar sign and then sprite, which is the name of my animated sprite. And I'm gonna say dot to access its properties. And I'm gonna say set underscore speed underscore scale. I'm not sure why it didn't prompt me with that. It didn't auto complete for me. I had to type it for myself. Set speed scale is a function call that lets you speed up by a percentage or a multiplier, the default normal frames per second of an animated sprites animation, whichever animation is currently playing. In this case, the walk animation is going to play. In fact, I think I have an extra line of code right there that I don't need because if I'm walking, then I can just walk once down there. So when I call this set speed scale, if I were to put 1.0 as my multiplier speed, it would just run at the normal five frames per second of that walk animation speed. But when I press run, I'm gonna multiply it by 1.8. So five times 1.8, whatever it is, will be the frames per second that I'm playing at. Otherwise, if I am just walking, I'm going to reset and I'll just copy that line of code and paste it right below in that else, the speed scale to 1.0, and that should do it. So I will copy that line of code from my other direction. If I'm pressing left and I'm pressing run as well, I wanna move at the speed of run or speed up to the speed of run, but I also wanna set my speed scale to 1.8, and I will copy that line of code for down here when I'm moving to the left in just a normal walk speed. So if you wanna copy me and pause this video and type this for yourself, please go ahead and do that. But I will go ahead and press Control S to save and I'll go back to my level one scene and I'll press play scene. So now if I hold Z on my keyboard and run my animation of my walking speeds up, if I let go, the walking slows down and that's exactly what I want. So in this video, we have added a finite state machine to organize our character's code a whole lot better, which has allowed us to add running as an ability for our character, but only when they're on the ground. To accomplish that, we use some new bits of programming, including an enum and a match statement and a ternary operator 
Whew, that was a lot for one video. Before I finish this video off, actually, I'm gonna go ahead and copy this one line of code that I forgot to include, or I accidentally got rid of it. This line, sprite.play walk. I not only need to walk when I'm pressing the left key, but also when I press right, I mistakenly got rid of this line of code before. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it back in, right, paste, there we go. But that will be it for this one. As always, my name is Colin. Thank you so much for watching. As always, if you like this video or if you learned something in it, please go ahead and click on that like button below this video. It really helps out me and my channel. And if you want to see more videos like this one in either Godot or in Blender, go ahead and click on subscribe and that bell icon below as well. Check out my Facebook page and my Instagram page. In those two places, I post sneak peeks and previews of what I'm working on next. And it's where I communicate with all of you the most, except here on YouTube, of course. But that'll be it for this one. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.